Hey everybody, um, we're excited today. We have a wonderful presentation on streaming for your businesses with the phenomenal Michael here today. And he's going to, he's our speaker and he has an expertise in streaming. He has a streaming social media business and he is going to tell us a little bit about himself and um, present to us today. My name is Lisa Riley. I am the founder of Odo Synergy Services Women of Color Entrepreneur Network and we are a 501c3 and we have been in existence for the past year empowering and advocating for underrepresented women of color entrepreneurs here in Silicon Valley in the San Francisco Bay Area. We're holding a series of Odo's Hot Topic Speaker Series on Mondays and we are going to present you with Michael who again is going to conduct a streaming presentation. Michael, Michael, welcome, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> so, so just to just to kind of start from the beginning, um, I have a small little soul prop business called Goddesses Media. Um, I sometimes go by Goddesses and Associates. Um, and mainly what I do is I, I'm your roundabout PC repair person, but I do video game streaming. So my streaming stuff is specifically for video gaming and Japanese anime content um, when I'm online. Um, I go by the performing arts name Fosung Elizabeth Cookie. And so I'm more known under the name as Cookie um, because that's what I go by on all of my social media platforms, just as a side note. Um, however, I do answer to the name Michael um, it doesn't really matter to me. You could call me either or. <laughs> uh, I just kind of want to put that out there. Um, and so today we're kind of just going over um, what it takes to start your successful stream because there's some elements and pieces that need to be bought to put all the equipment together. If you're doing stationary streaming, which is different from mobile streaming, which is on an iPad, um, a tablet device or your cell phone. And so I wanted to kind of go over some terms um, so people could get an understanding of what's happening here. So um, I'm quite sure y'all can see this page. I emailed this to myself. Um, and this is what is an online stream, you know, and, and basically the answer is any media content live or recorded delivered to computers or mobile devices via the internet and played back in real time, um, podcasts, web, webcasts, movies, TV shows, and music videos are common forms of streaming content. Now, I added this extra, what is a simulcast? Um, and that's basically the same thing, any media content live or recorded delivered to computers or mobile devices via the internet played back in real time, but it's happening on multiple network channels at the same time. So a good example of that is when I do my video game streaming and I'm streaming content from my PlayStation my Nintendo, or any retro video gaming console like a Super Nintendo, and I'm capturing the media footage and I'm going broadcasting on it. I'm then streaming to multiple channels at the same time, whether it be YouTube, Facebook, or Twitter, for example. So that is considered a simulcast. So whether if somebody doesn't catch you on your Facebook stream, they'll catch you on your Twitch, or they'll catch you on your YouTube. So they have three ways to catch you when you're online if they're not, if they have no affiliations with those networks. Um, and then right underneath, we have examples of the differences between social media streaming and then industry streaming. So social media streaming would be um, like live stream, you stream, Twitch, YouTube, Instagram, Vimeo, Periscope, Mixer, Facebook, because it allows the person to create an account, decorate their page, create a presence for themselves, and then use that platform as their channel to stream directly to where their followers will catch them. Versus the industry such as Hulu, Netflix, Amazon, HBO, Funimation, Oprah Winfrey Network, Disney+, Plus, CBS, etc. Um, what's the, the media that's being streamed is being more controlled by the entity on, a, on, a, on an industry base. So usually a contract has taken place 
between that company and that person who's creating that content or the media. And there has been something that's gone on in the back end that has allowed them to have their content stream on their platform. Um, and they technically don't have too much control over that. It's set their parameters and it's there. So what we'll be primarily focusing on here is control of your own content by tapping into your, your user base, your media following through, public, um, through the public space, through the usage of social media streaming channels specifically. Um, am I going too fast, guys? Hello? Sounds good. Okay, cool. All right. It was awkward silence for a second. <laughs> now, underneath this, um, I put a little definition for mobile streaming. So our devices, such as our cell phones, um, allow us the ability, depending on your kind of cell phone, if you have an up-to-date cell phone with the ability to stream, then you can tap into, especially like uh, Android phones, you can get into your Facebook app or your YouTube app or your Twitch app and do live streaming from the application on your phone in real time, wherever the location that you're at. And you're using your, in you're using your internet package that's associated with your cell phone plan um, to do the streaming. So if you have a really good internet package on your phone, then you can stream really well. The better your internet package, the better the quality, the better the frequency. Hey, Mike, can I ask some questions? Oh, feel free. What, so what, what, what are the companies, are they on here that have the better internet packages? Do you have some recommendations from one or two? Yes, I do. I, personally, personally, I highly recommend AT&T and Verizon. Cool. AT&T and Verizon, those are the top two. And then, and then everything kind of trickles from there. I would say in third place would be T-Mobile. Mm -hmm. I think some people may argue with me on that one. They may have their own opinions. But um, if you're really trying to go in and you want to do it well, AT&T or Verizon. What are, what are those packages running? That, that, depends, that depends on the type of cell phone you have, the kind of camera that's on that cell phone and the quality of the capture. Um, and that's something you would have to go through, going to um, the actual location of an at and or Verizon cell phone location. Mm -hmm. Good. Phone, to, as you know, technology is forever changing. Phones are forever being updated. Um, I can say that for me, I have the Galaxy S10 Plus. This is the, and I wanted space. I wanted unrestricted space. So my phone specifically has one terabyte of internal space plus a 512 gigabyte micro SD card. So I'll have basically a, a terabyte and a half of space on my phone. And oh that my is God. crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because, you know, I, I want my program. <laughs> and, you know, I did it like that because I got tired of the Android updates. Man, I when, know. <laughs> when these Android updates come in, there's so much update that take up so much of the cell phone resources. Yep. Mm -hmm that by the time you try to answer a telephone or use an app, you can end up missing your cell phone call that's coming in that you're trying to actually activate and it's not happening. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, so that's what the whole space is about. The space is to compromise um, and to work with all the incoming and impending updates from Android, which is changing 24 seven. And I'm just curious, how much RAM does that phone have? Um, I believe I got to look into it. Actually, wait, hold up, hold up here, because I I leave the stickers on everything here. <laughs> now. Because hey, the resale value of this phone is godlike. Let me tell you. <laughs> I know. Uh, I think it has like four gigs. Yeah. Thank you, Rob. <laughs> Thank you, Rob. Yeah, four four gigs, four gigs of um of RAM. <laughs> That's it's better than some people's computers. Some people's home systems aren't even that big. Hello, talk to me. <laughs> so, I um I normally don't do mobile streaming like that unless I'm at a major video game competition event, 
and I'm streaming to followers that couldn't make it to the tournament. And so grand finals, you know, and, and other interesting parts of the convention or other parts of the tournament that is that people want to see, I try to make sure that I'm there so I can live stream what they couldn't be there um, physically for. And that's when mobile streaming comes into play specifically for me. Otherwise, I'm on my mainframe, mm -hmm. like right now. I'm using my main, I'm using my mainframe computer, which is shaped like an obelisk, which mm -hmm. I'll get to in a, in a few. Mm -hmm. um, and then moving forward, um, stationary streaming is broadcasting at home or a specific location from a dedicated device, like what we're all doing right now, but is happening in a private room. Um, and basically, um, I'll be going into setting up your web-based infrastructure um, and talking about the social media accounts and the, the streaming applications that will be needed for starting the wonderful world of your broadcast. So with that being said, um, before I like, truly begin, does anybody have any questions? Okay, good. That means I can start. A good streaming starts with a good computer and excellent internet connection. As a gamer, you're going to always want to be hardwired into your modem. Um, unless you have the best wireless package in the world or you're in a country like Japan, you're going to want to be hardwired through the ethernet through your desktop computer into the modem. Now here's the thing, I've always had great luck with Comcast. Comcast, I believe, has the best internet above AT&T. Oh, they just, sorry. <laughs> they, just, they just have poor customer service. Where AT&T has better customer service, they just don't have the best internet. Mm. It's, I've had AT&T for a while, but it also depends on your area, which mm -hmm. let me put that out there. Mm -hmm. The different areas have different contracts, different packages, different ranges. I just happen to be in an area where I have really good internet and I got the best internet that Comcast, I'm, o I'm almost fiber optics almost, but oh. I'm, not qu I'm not quite there, but, mm. but that's how good the internet is in my area. And so because I function through the internet, I have just the internet package itself, no telephone, no cable, no nothing, just straight up internet because I can catch all my TV shows and everything else through the net. Um, be ready. And that's one thing. So internet is, I would say, is the first parameter. Really setting up a good internet package and checking into your upload and your download speeds. You want to get the max. And since you're a 501c3, Lisa, and I'm a sole prop, I was able to get business internet. So there are deals. There are specific deals if you're functioning I, from a business. I got one, baby. I just got me a deal. See? <laughs> so really cash in on those deals. You know. So once you have the internet secured, then we want to get into the computer. Now keep in mind I'm I'm teaching right now from a gaming perspective. So for me, I need a very strong computer with a strong capture card. If it has one internally, you know, if not, that's fine. You can get an external one. But for purposes of what we're talking about here, we're going to omit the capture card until last because um, to stream publicly, you technically don't need the capture card. That's just if you're trying to capture media from external devices. Okay. So I'm going to um, move to this page here. There we go. This is what I have right here. This is my computer, if y'all can see that. Um, my desktop here allows me to hold a hot swappable laptop hard drive that, that goes into the top of it. Um, two separate um, solid state drives and one traditional internal hard drive. Um, I believe I have the upgraded version of this. I just wanted to get the picture right there of it so people can see it. Um, mine is nearly almost four gigahertz in terms of speed. 
um, I'm sitting on 32 gigabytes of RAM and functioning on almost 12 terabytes of space. And especially for someone like you, Lisa, who wants to record your sessions, like what you're doing right now, space is paramount. In my opinion, you're gonna wanna have a desktop that doesn't, that is um, at least, at least four terabytes of space. You can do it with two or one, but if you're really trying to be unquestionable, mm -hmm. have at least four terabytes of space. So that if you're streaming in high quality, um, 1080p or 4K, which is gonna eat up a lot of space and a lot of resources, you'll, um, you'll have more than enough space to compromise. You won't have issues. I'm gonna use your computer to stream. Forget mine. <laughs> Well, I, got you, a ma I got a master plan, Michael. Be quiet now. Go, okay, Lisa, be quiet. I know, I know you want to be mobile, and, and trust me, my laptop is just as powerful as, um, as my desktop. Um, I give the credits to Strike First Gaming, who are my gaming sponsors. Thank you very so much for sponsoring me for my, my gaming laptop. <laughs> yeah, so um, if I ever do decide to do mobile streaming on a stationary laptop, at a location, then yes, my laptop is just as powerful as that desktop right there. Um, and with that, you can get some good RAM. Um, and it comes with a good amount of RAM inside, good amount of space. Of course, I upgraded mine. I opened up the machine and I, I kind of beefed it out to the max. I didn't have to, but you know, for all the gaming that I'm doing, I wanted it to function hiccup free which is what's happening right now. <laughs> so, um, so that kind of covers that. You want to have a strong system if you're streaming at home. Strong internet, strong computer. I see someone's coming in. Uh, Lisa? Join us. Okay. Keep going, Mike. Okay, cool. Mm -hmm. And then once you have your base foundation right there, now comes all the side pieces that goes into your stream setup. You know, you, you need a good mic. I'm functioning from a Blue Yeti mic right now. Mm -mm. That's right. Good mics. Good. This, this is nice. That's this nice. Is, That's hecka nice. Uh, yeah, my, mine was a little bit more. This, this is like the entry. Like, there's some mics that are like, 300 and up but if you really want good quality sound and you're going to be speaking and talking and doing a podcast sound is everything and i highly recommend a blue yeti mic um there are other companies that make great ones you know for the for the gaming world my, i go through um aver media so aver media has their mics their capture cards their headphones their wireless mics, they're everything. But um, I decided to have certain pieces separate. So my capture card stands alone, my sound system stands alone, um, and so does my mic. Mine is silver, same one right here in the picture, but it's silver and it's the, I think the next step above this one, I got a real good deal at Amazon. So um, if y'all are taking notes and writing this down, um, for, for you guys out there that have business, um, whether it be a 501c3, um, what is it? Sole proprietorship Sole proprietor. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. or L was it LLC? Did I say mm -hmm. that right? LLC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, Amazon business account is the way to go. They ask for your EIN. They ask for your tax ID information. If you have that uh, tax, I tax, um, um, ID number, all of that you can get, and then you'll get the wholesale price rather than the customer price, mm. which, helps, which helps, which is how I got a lot of my equipment. I got the wholesale price rather than the, um, the customer price because I have Amazon business. Oh, and it comes with um, Amazon Fire TV too, for free. Mm -hmm. I have that already. Okay. But still, that's a good, entrepreneurs need to know that. People need to know that. Mm -hmm. um, outside of that, the next piece that's very paramount is the way people see you. I'm going to assume I look crystal clear on my HD camera. <laughs> yeah, sure do. Okay. <laughs> Let me bring that up. Hold up here. 
I'm gonna minimize this so I can get to the page. There we go. Nope, that's tripods. Hold on here. We're getting there. Ah, there we go. Okay, so this is not the company. It's not Nexigo. I highly recommend Logitech. Logitech, that's what was supposed to come up, but it didn't. Hold on here. Where are you, Logitech? Because uh, webcams are changing all the time, and since, you know, quarantine is still not over yet, webcams are really booming. Yeah, we couldn't find one, huh, for a minute. Mm-hmm. So, oh, oh, here we go. Woohoo! Look at this one. So, you know, entry level now, standard is 1080p. But of course, if you're trying to really do some damage, if you could get your hands on a 4K webcam, or, or if you want to be a bit more technically involved and get an actual camcorder, an actual camcorder that you can record, those can actually connect to your computer depending on the streaming software, which will, I'll get to in a second, where you can use a DSLR camera as your actual capture camera, like, like damn near movie industry camera lens. And then you would have to sync it with the application that's going to be controlling all of your streaming. So, but if you're trying to be simple and, you know, be at the, be at basic level, this Logitech here is the way to go. What I have is this one. This is my exact camera I'm functioning from right now. This one right here. And I love it. It does everything. Um, it also captures sound. If I wanted it to be my mic for right now, it could have been my mic, but I'm not routing it to be my mic. Okay. All right. How is there anyone, anybody has questions at the moment? Well, Mike, uh, Monique, one of our team members just joined. So I just wanted you to say hi to Monique. Monique, you can ask your question. Monique lives in Arizona. Oh. Um, what is the question? Speak up, Miss Moni. Oh, hi. Um, my my question is um, for I'm I'm sorry I jumped in late. Um, I'm a PC user. I know it sounds horrible, but no, I'm I am really too. I am too. Oh yay! Because I I just like PCs. I'm sorry. I like. I know everybody's trying to get me to go to Mac. Um, I really like my PCs. What I'm looking to buy a new PC in the next um month or two and i want to know um what is the best uh brand to look at for a pc that has to that can run all of this so it, it depends on your preference i i like all of my technology to match you know back in the day i swore by sony vio i followed sony vio into the pits of hell basically even when they stopped doing desktops. I continued with their laptops for a while until I wanted to get into video game streaming. So right now, I'm into Asus. Asus and um, Razorblade. Razorblade does desktops as well. Um, okay. And because my Asus desktop has not given me any issues, um, that my desktop is specifically for gamers. So gamers, a gaming desktop is specifically built for streaming and long hours of video game play and a beefy graphics card. So not only are you playing, you know, some of the highest quality video games, you're, you're functioning on multiple screens. So right now y'all see me on one screen, but I have three, I have three monitors connected. Oh, wow. Yes, which is which actually gets into the next part of my stream in a second. So for me, you know, and this is just my opinion, in this order, it's ACES because they okay. have a whole sector called Republic of Gamers. Okay. Then, it's, then it's Razorblade. Then it's HP Omen. Okay. They have the Omen series. And then underneath that, then I will go with Alienware. Alienware okay. tends to be overly expensive and you could get the same amount of power for a bit more cheaper when you go with the other brands that I just mentioned. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you. 
And then um, I'll give you my number if you want to talk offline. So then I can, you know, kind of give a little bit of advice. Okay, perfect. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, um, let's see, you just, you just stepped in. I'm, uh, I'm not sure how much you missed, but we, I just went over, I just went over um, the uh, microphone, having a good microphone, having a good um, web camera, and then your mainframe, mm -hmm. which is your desktop computer. Yeah. The, the, um, if anybody doesn't know, I have an older Logitech. Logitech, I have been using, uh, this going to date me, but I've been using since they started. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, their, their equipment just works and it just works. I mean, I've, the one that I have is, is a H, HD 720 mm -hmm. and it looks as crystal clear as yours. So oh, yeah. that, that if you're, was looking, the, if you're that in was the market the for, yeah, webcam, I, I highly recommend Logitech. Yeah, that's what he was just saying. Well, they, they, that's because they're the most versatile with all the streaming application programs. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But you know what? That sounds like the company gets some stock in too right now, huh? Let me look up their stock. <laughs> Logitech. You, oh, I, I can see you writing this down, huh? No, I, I look. I'm finna look up their stock right now. <laughs> yeah, so Logitech okay. is an offshoot brand from um, Microsoft. They basically came up the same time Microsoft did. They had a long-standing mm -hmm. partnership, so most of their hardware is going to be on point for anything you do with PC. Um, and it actually works really well at most software vendors, so you're never going to have a problem. They're almost mm -hmm. nice, Rob. Everybody, this is Rob, our new friend. Um, the Logitech stock is sixty-three dollars uh, a share. That's not bad. Uh, <laughs> wow, you found that quick. Look, I'm not playing. I'm trying to get ready for this new economy. Okay, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, Michael. I'm sorry. No, no, it's good. No, ask as many questions as y'all like. Um, yeah. So, because the current Logitech webcams come with clips on the back, you can clip them to your monitor, or you can attach them to a um, tripod. Um, I have a tripod when I'm trying to get a larger range of area. So I highly invest just as an accessory, having a tripod on hand. Um, this piece right here, this square piece, that's un that gets unscrewed because, um, of course, the regular the regular screw bolt that's underneath that screws into your webcam or any camera for that matter, that's just kind of a universal plug right there. So having a good tripod that's sturdy, um, has a good foundation, have that as an accessory. I'm just kind of throwing that in, okay? Mm -hmm. So once you have your internet in order, the computer that you're gonna use, your, your microphone, your mic, your industry level mic, and your webcam, now comes the most important part, which is this, the setting up of everything. And I'm not talking about the pieces. Setting up the pieces is easy. We're talking about what comes technically before setting up all the physical devices, which is making your online presence. You need a place to stream to. So I'm gonna change the page. So for a lot of us gamers, I'm gonna go with something a lot easier. Um, we like YouTube. Here, let me go to YouTube Create here. Go live. Hit that page right there. Okay. And Twitch. YouTube and Twitch. I'm just kind of switching between the two. So YouTube, um, everyone knows YouTube. They've been updating a lot of their um, interfaces. And now YouTube can speak to software programs on your computer that will allow you to stream from home instead of just a, multi, um, um, a mobile device. I say that to say that the program that I recommend that has as many options embedded in it that will speak to many different channels is called Wirecast. I'm gonna go to it right here. Here we go. That's the emblem, but we're gonna go to the actual site itself. The company is called Telestream, and Telestream's 
program is called Wirecast. Let me scroll down here. I hope that's clear right there. Well, it says stream like a pro. Wirecast allows me to do simulcasts. I can stream to as many platforms as the bandwidth and the strength of my internet can handle. That's right. So right now, I prefer to stream to three of the major channels, which is Twitch, YouTube, Facebook. When Instagram upgrades their interfaces so that I, you know, so this program can speak to it, I'll do Instagram as well. But for right now, it's just those three. And what you're going to need is a program like this. There, there are many other programs, but I'm using Wirecast because it's the easiest to set up. And if you're familiar with Adobe, Adobe Photoshop um, and Adobe Premiere functions in something called layers. So I'm going to load up my Wirecast right now to show you what that looks like. So when I go into my, where is it here? Bear with me, my broadcasting studio folder. I have multiple different saves here. So we're gonna go to my arcade stream setup. There we go. Okay, we'll cancel that. Okay, there's no signal because right now my capture card is connected to my Nintendo Switch. Can y'all see all of that? I can. Can you guys see? I'm going to do a full screen. Let's see. Oh, I see where it's the screen. The screen has paused. Let's see. I should be able to move this around. New share. Ah, here we go. Let me share this. Share. Okay. Can y'all see that? Yeah, I can see it. Okay. So this is my broadcasting stream. And this is Wirecast. And what you see down here are the different layers. These are the different layers that you see. Oh, we have somebody else coming in. Okay. Hello, Kayla. Join us, please. Okay. And so the reason why it says no si no signal right now because um I don't have my I don't have my Nintendo switched. I don't have my Nintendo turned on right now. So, but yeah, my capture card is set up to my Nintendo Switch, um, and it will be streaming through that. I'm trying to see if I could just turn it on just for an example, maybe. Oh, and the battery's dead, so that's not that's not helping right now. I didn't charge. Oh. My, I didn't uh -huh. charge. I didn't charge the switch, but uh -huh. that's okay. But you get the gist of what I'm doing here. You get the gist of what I'm doing here. The most important thing is the way the layers are set up in this program that allows you to put in your own borders and your own templates, so that you can be seen. So this box right here, this would be my camera. So I'm going to set up my, my camera here. My video capture is going to be my, um, here. Add. And it may not show up because it's already in use because I'm using zoom. So that's why it's not even going to show up. But this box right here would show my face, like what it's, what it's doing right now with you guys. These are my, my social media handles right here, where you can find me on Twitter, where you can find me on Facebook. My Facebook fan page is right there. Mm. Mm -hmm. My Instagram, my LinkedIn, my YouTube, my Twitch, and my Discord. You want to find me on Discord, which is um, another social media um, platform. And then you'll see my logo behind this, which is the Goddesses Media. But most importantly, these are the layers that control everything. So if I want to put a commercial screen, I can put like a commercial screen right here, which I have. You know, I will go to, let's say, uh, my media files. I will browse my disk right here. Up oh, here it is, commercial break sign. And I'll put that there. And then if I want to go to commercial break, I can cancel out. I can cancel that out and then go to commercial break 
resize it. Let me resize that right there. Hold on here. Here we go. Hold on. Hold on here. Oh, you can't stream. It doesn't make sense to stream to like LinkedIn or anything like that, huh? No, but if they're if they're looking, you know, if they're looking for, you know, my other platforms, then that's where this information comes in. They can find me. So I don't know what's going on right now. I can't resize my, but anyway, where you see the white border right there, I would bring it in and resize it to fit the parameters of this blue border right here, because this is what people are seeing on the other end of their monitors. So I have complete control over the way I'm streaming. So if I'm going to take a commercial break or I'm going to put up a commercial or something, I can even put pre-made commercials right there, put that there, and then go do what I need to do. Ooh. Come back after the commercial break and go right back into this, lock that out, go back into this, and boom, we're back onto the stream. So this would be great to stream a conference, huh? Like a, like a four-hour all-day conference session. Yeah, you can. That's, you could do that one way, but then you probably want to have multiple cameras. So like how I'm using the Logitech right here, you can hook up multiple Logitech cameras and then have them on multiple timelines right here. Oops, sorry. Have them on multiple timelines and then just, you know, control the usage of them, how you want them to capture the angles of the room. Mm. You, can have them, you can have them overlap or you can just have them work singularly. Yeah, I can I can kind of give a little more insight on that one. So when you're talking about concerts and things like that, like the Essence concert or BET or something like that that you've been seeing lately, they're using more professional setup. What they usually use is something called a Black Magic motherboard. Mm -hmm. um, they're based out of Fremont, by the way, mm. and they basically do TV TV quality um, broadcast. That's what we were using um, when Cookie and I were Cookie and I were working on. The anime superstar show several years ago we were working out of a studio on powell street in san francisco and that was the setup that they had they had two or three computers a big soundboard this big um well it wasn't really big but it had it handled like four to four to eight cameras and we had stationary cameras as well as motion cameras people could pick up and walk around with them so it was actually pretty good to have floating cameras and everything. It gives you multiple angles, and you actually run it like a television broadcast mm -hmm. studio. So, so Rob, <clears throat> we're, 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 you know, our vision, our goal is to, as part of, I don't know if Mike told you a little bit about us, but, you know, our, our long-term goals is to go to other countries and host retreats with other um, entrepreneurs, diverse mm -hmm. entrepreneurs, and you know, we would love to be able to stream those events. Like we have a big global forum coming up on July the 25th with about uh, eight or nine panelists, but it's going to be women from different countries. Okay. And so we're going to, we would love to stream that too, but I don't know if we have the capability to do that. But well, I mean, it's more based on, it's more based on what their, what their internet is their like. Their setup. Yeah. And how you can get them set up so you can get the best quality bandwidth from them possible. Oh, That's okay. the only limiter right now. Ooh. Because if you're only dealing with individuals one on one in different locations, it's not that big of a deal. If you're talking about, however, a live studio thing where you have multiple cameras and you're trying to go into one device and do one stream, then it changes mm -hmm. everything up. Mm, so I, better so send I, just email kinda, I just was trying to add on to what Michael was saying mm -hmm. so that, you know, we, we kind of understood the difference between what's, what's usable as a prosumer home-based thing that he's doing mm -hmm. and what a big professional operation would look like. So uh, Monique, I don't know why she's shy, but she's saying Odo's uh, TV channel in the future. Right, Monique? Yeah, uh, yeah. Her church probably used it to broadcast out because they had uh, they probably had a camera that was directly on the pulpit, and then they had a camera for the choir and probably a few for the band, so they could actually bounce around and actually show you the entire thing. Plus, they probably had audience wide shots so you could see the entire church. So that's how they do it. And yeah, basically one it's basically run by two or three people, 
in the studio, kind of in a uh, box kind of setup where they can sit down and kind of look at everything and push, produce it and push it yeah. out to everybody. Bring in that. Oh, finally, I got back on. Yes, that's correct. Um, <laughs> we, I was the media person for oh. our church. So that's how I know all, I, when he was talking about it, I said, oh, yeah, I know that software. <laughs> Yeah, so and we actually so looked at Wirecast um, when we were first uh, when the pastor wanted to um, <laughs> upgrade our equipment. So we looked at all yeah. of that. So yeah, this is this is uh, great. Well, Thank you. If, if, if you need if you need a copy with a serial key, I have. Because oh, <laughs> you know that's that software is expensive. <laughs> Right? That's why I was like, ooh, he got to the software? We will talk. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but um, no, thank you, Rob, because uh, that goes into um, something I wanted to reveal, too, because um, from a home base setup, there's also something called a stream deck, which I have, which allows you to have an in-home switcher just to press singular buttons when you're switching between camera, microphone, commercial breaks, commercial video and going back into the stream to have clean, um, crisp and smooth and elegant transitions. Um, let's see, I'm going to share another screen right now so y'all can see this. Sorry. And so while you're doing that, I wanted to introduce um, Kayla because she's the board member of the uh, Berkeley flea market. And so we're hello. talking about, hello. We're talking about, <laughs> we're talking, she's my co-host for July, the co-producer for July 25th, but we're talking about hosting a Odo's vendor fundraiser at the, uh, at the flea market in the future. So this, this is another nice, uh, uh, you know, uh, opportunity forum to cover, cover that event too. So just wanted yeah, to throw great that to be able to live stream it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. Okay, so <clears throat> this is the um, stream deck right here, if y'all can see that. Um, this is what I also have. And these buttons, you can program them. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, ten. There's 15 buttons on here. And you can program them and integrate it with the software Wirecast. Um, to allow it to do what you need it to do without having to always click on buttons and move the mouse around. And so depending, how, depending on how big your stream is, you may wanna have a team of two to three people, maybe even five, because one person should be checking out the chat while another person is making sure that the stream doesn't hiccup, while another person is also um, there to hit the buttons on the stream deck for when it's time to transition into something else. And that's usually what happens at the video gaming tournaments that I go to when they stream, there's usually three to four people at the desk and the expansion of the monitors, everyone has a separate monitor. That's why there are three monitors because there's the main monitor, there's the chat monitor, and then there's the actual software monitor Someone's monitoring the software on one, mon on one monitor or somebody is answering the chat on the third monitor or somebody is focusing on the game on the first monitor, if that's making any sense. So <clears throat> depending on if you're doing that or you're doing something else like a meeting, um, it may not be that involved. So you just wanna have somebody look at the way the software is functioning and the transitions someone to control the transitions and the software while someone else is controlling the social media pages. Because if you're streaming to multiple channels, what I normally do is I will have three different pages up. So I'll separate them like this. I'll separate them individually so that I can see the chat on Twitch, the chat on Facebook and the chat on YouTube and then jump in between whenever I have a moment when it's just by myself. But when you have your team, there's somebody already taking care of that so that you can focus on the task at hand. Is all this making sense, guys? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. Cool. But ask questions, you guys. Don't be shy. Mm -hmm. No comments. This is a teaching uh, class. So. <clears throat> 
let's see here. I'm trying to make sure I've, I've gone over everything in my itinerary. But yes, the software, the software is what's going to allow all the pieces to come together, the microphone, the, the webcam, the computer, the monitors, everything is coming together and being tied together with that program. So that program is important. Now, what's also integral to the program that's connecting, the program is only as good as the social media channels that you are affiliated with. So that means if you have incomplete pages, I'm gonna go back to Wirecast because this is important for this piece here. So I'm gonna share the Wirecast again. New share, let me go back to that. So if y'all can see that, my output settings shows that I'm ready to stream to Twitch and to YouTube right there on, the, on this particular setup. I have another setup for all three, including Facebook. But let's see, let's add more. There we go. Okay, this is a very small box right here. It's, but within this box, these are the destinations that Wirecast works with. It works with Azure Media Services, um, Akamai, Boxcast, Brightcove, ChurchStreaming.tv, Decast Streaming Services, Facebook Live, ESC Networks, um, Ustream and Livestream is also there, LinkedIn Live, which is something pretty new, Live Arena, um, Mixer, um, let's see, Periscope. So these are all the different channels right there that I'm just going through. Twitch is there. Um, Verizon has their digital media services. You can stream to them. Vimeo is up there. YouTube. So you want to set up your pages and you want to remember the passwords to those pages. So if you're going to stream to YouTube or Facebook or Twitch or Instagram, just to keep it simple, you really want to set up those pages ready to stream. So your banner, your logos, your company information, who you are, what you're about. You want that stuff tight and already pre-set up so that when you get ready to stream every time, there is nothing to do on those pages unless you're going to update when your next stream is going to be. And then you would update that information on those specific pages individually. Because when you stream to those channels, the software doesn't have that power to control the information on those channels. You have to go to those channels separately and do that. So setting up your social media presence first and then having, having the software up and running so that you're ready to go and get out there and, and broadcast live. So I wanted to make sure I kind of kind of really iterate that first. And sometimes that takes me about a good 30 to 45 minutes first if there's updated information that I'm gonna put onto those sites, especially Twitch. Um, if I'm gonna manually put in the hashtags, manually put in a description of what I'm gonna stream or what I'm gonna talk about, I have to make sure I do that prior to me starting the stream so that I'm not streaming something that doesn't match with the description of what people see on their ends of their television screen or their monitor. So we wanna make sure it's all coherent and it all matches, all stays the same. Um, so setting up some templates in advance to save you some time. Um, I highly recommend setting up your paragraphs. So if you're pretty much cut and dry, straightforward, the same thing every time, then I would set that up first. Have that solid get that out the way. And then when you get ready to load your software, just make sure that all of your information is ready to go. Like here, my output settings on the side here is set up for YouTube and Twitch. And then after clicking OK, I can then hit the broadcast button, which is right there. And I'm ready to meet my audience. So that's kind of it right here in a nutshell on um, just this kind of the basics of streaming at home um, from a stationary platform from your, from your computer. So just to say everything one more time over, strong, strong desktop. I prefer, and like I said, I'm a gamer, so I'm speaking from a gaming perspective, a strong gaming desktop. 
an excellent internet package, an HD webcam, a strong microphone, your social media networks that you're gonna that you're gonna stream to. Those channels need to be already set up with your information and your page already solid. And then make sure you have your application software and spending time setting it up along with the camera and syncing everything so you have the angles and the dimensions so that the people on the other side of the screen can see exactly what you see. And the good thing about Wirecast is it shows you right here what you'll look like. So if I do, I'm on a double screen. This is a single, when I do double screen like that, this shows me exactly what the person will see on the other side. So right now they'll see what I'm seeing. So, and that is, Let's see. That is about it. Any technical questions? What's the cost for this whole setup to be an effective streaming professional? Okay, well, be ready to invest. <laughs> <laughs> because I know that, like, yeah, like for like a, game, a game computer. <laughs> a gaming computer is like what? A, a gaming computer in and of itself. <laughs> Um, yeah, minimum. <laughs> so here, so here, I'm gonna give you, you my prices. Computer. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you my prices before Rob chimes in and give him, and he gives you y'all his wisdom as well. I want, um, hey, I want all the wisdom. We're recording this, Rob. So I want all your wisdom right now. So, 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 so when it comes to um, the desktop, my, my desktop specifically was a little bit over two thousand dollars. And then the webcam, because I got a deal on it, I got the other stuff through Amazon Business. This was like a $200 webcam that I got for $75. Woohoo! Uh huh. And then the Blue Yeti mic, you know, it was, I paid $150 for it, a little bit over $150 when it was technically like $275. And then um, let's see, my internet package is changing yearly because I got to make sure I stay on top of it with Comcast. Because um, to keep the same um, $80 a month, you got to renew the new package every month. Otherwise, if you don't renew it under a new package, they'll assume you want the same one and then you'll get the real charges, which is like 150, 175 or something. Comcast really makes money off of people forgetting to renew under a new contract. Mm -hmm. So that's the secret to keeping things between um, 65 and $80 for your internet, just putting that out there. Mm -hmm. Um, let's see, the monitors itself, these are gaming monitors specifically. Um, each monitor, because they're an older model, but they're still gaming standard, they were like $100 a piece. You know, um, I would say all together, have about, and then all the other extra microphones and extra stuff that I have that I'm not even talking about that's for something more advanced later, plus the streaming deck. I would say about have at least a good 7K. Hmm. If you're trying to go hardcore, you know, I wanted to, I wanted to really go hardcore, hmm. have about at least 7K, but you can make things happen with, at least, with like two or 3K. You can make things happen. Well, and you know, and you have to know or know someone that knows how to find the discounts too, how to find mm -hmm. the sales, how to find the deals, how to go on Amazon and-, and Because deal. you're- your desktop doesn't have to be two, three thousand dollars. You can get a really good gaming desktop for like, you know, a little bit under a thousand. You can you can break good with like between seven and eight hundred dollar desktop. You know, quad core. So if I did like the G three uh, the G three Dell game uh -huh. gaming, and I know that that was like that's like the lowest level whatsoever. I'm, I'm looking at like the seven hundred, eight hundred range right there. And mm -hmm. I'm going in base with that. Well, that is that a good enough start to like, what might I run up against? That that's a good enough start. But the real question is how much RAM is up up in that computer and how big is the hard drive space? Okay. Uh, those are the things I would say. Um, when you're looking at streaming and you're looking at things that you guys are doing like live streaming and all that, you're looking at RAM. You know, that's the that's the actual memory in your system. That's your system memory. So it's going to go up to a maximum of 32 in most systems. With the more advanced systems, you can get 64 gigs of RAM. And that's a lot. That's that's a ton. 
what's the lowest of RAM I could get that I could get started on something kind of small? Because um, I know it starts at like a base eight or something. Yeah. 816. Yeah, eight, but yeah, a base eight, but that also means that you'll probably get a lot of lags and a lot of lag spikes because it's going to be moving resources back and back and forth on your system and okay. calling memory ranges. So you want to get at least 16. You know, um, okay. And that's easy enough to do. Even if you buy a machine, you know, off the rack and it comes with eight, you can actually go and buy the RAM and install it yourself. It's really easy. Um, you know, okay. it's, just, it's just chips. You pull, pull the two chips out, you put the, the other chips in, and it goes, and you restart your machine, and it's fine. And it's actually pretty easy to do. Um, okay. Your, your hard drives are pretty much the same. It's plug and play for a lot of your hard drives nowadays. Um, or you can just use an external hard drive for the extra stuff that you need for storage. Because the hard drives are strictly storage. They're not anything else but storage at this point. So you don't really want to put too much stuff on your OS drive because that will slow it down outside of the software you're using. But anything else like your files and all that other stuff, you can use an external drive and just pull from there and it'll be just as fine. Okay. Um, in terms of finding decent systems, um, there's enough people that build systems that are around that you could actually have a custom built system and probably get in as low as 650 bucks for everything that you need. But again, that's a little bit more farming than most people might want to have. And of course, if you're not, like I said, I'm in the Bay Area, we're in the Silicon Valley where there's a lot of people that can do it. Whereas, you know, you may be someplace where that may not be possible. You know, those are things that you want to definitely research. If you can get it at a lower price, you want to work for it. You know, and like I said, I think that between Michael and myself, we can spec out a machine for you. So you can literally walk in the door to somebody who builds systems and say, this is what I want. And you will know what the price ranges are going to be. And if they give you something more than that, then you can walk away. Um, This is really good knowledge because okay. I haven't, I don't know about any of you guys, but other than trying to go on YouTube or anything, I have no interest in streaming. Monique was saying I'm a streamer, but I have no interest in streaming, Monique. <laughs> personally, but my goal is to get a team where Odos is going to be so powerful that our stuff is going to be on point. Our conferences are already, um, just after our second conference, you know, we, we're doing the thing, right? And we don't even know what we're doing, but we're, we have some great content and we want to be able to blow that up to the next level. And so we want to get the best streaming expertise in here we got mike now we got you rob we're going to be writing grants and stuff like that and so we want the bay area to come to us and so this is great information because we can hold more of these sessions <clears throat> and build up this session so that you know uh, entrepreneurs small businesses can understand what they need to have good quality events and in uh, services to attract more people more clients um, so this is really a, this is a great session, you guys. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, well, if there's something that this pandemic situation has kind of taught everybody, it has taught a lot of businesses, especially a lot of entrepreneurial businesses, that there's a big market for content that people can't ordinarily get, that television can't give you. And so being able to get your name out there and get yourself into a position where you can... Um, deliver um, deliver something that's that's of value to people and bring value to them, that's always going to be in demand. Um, it's the thing I always say that we always have to be um, relevant. You want to always have relevancy mm -hmm. in what you're doing. Like a lot of people who now have channels these days that I see, especially the ones that have just popped up since the pandemic happened, they're all basically making noise, but they're not really bringing value. Mm. They're giving you something to keep you distracted, but they're not really giving you anything to use or that you can take forward. With. So you really want to make sure that as you go forward, um, when you're looking at the things that you guys are doing, you're going to bring value. You always want to have something that's going to be relevant. You want to be able to have it scheduled and you want to have it where people can get to it easily in a lot of different platforms. So aside from the live stream portions of it, you want to be able to go back, reproduce it, and then put it up in places like YouTube or on um, Facebook, Facebook Watch or 
um, Twitch as a background channel because then people will go back and watch it later and that actually gets your views and gets your name out and also people will find you. So I think that, that, that you're on the right track. There's a lot of, there's a lot of um, opportunities that can be mined still and there's still things that haven't even opened up yet that I think you guys will be able to take advantage of later. Don't go away, Rob. We need you then. Thank you, Michael, for inviting Rob. Because, <laughs> uh -huh. you know, Rob, we've just been doing, we just started a 501c3 in February of 2020, uh, 20, uh, 2019. And Angel Lewis, who is not on the call, she's our um, social media manager and our content and our graphics is killing. I got people calling me right now and they're like, who's doing your graphics? Your graphic is, your content is so professional. And we're on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and I moved some of this stuff on uh, to my LinkedIn, I mean, my LinkedIn page. But we're, you know, we're still not drawing traffic because we're not putting, we don't have dollars right now to really put heavily into like Facebook ads and, you know, heavy marketing. And so it sounds like this might be the avenue to explore a little bit more and build on our um, capacity. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. But how do you scale up? I mean, my thing is everyone's like, oh, it takes time. It takes time. But you know, we're averaging, I have 5,000 people just on my, I mean, 2,000 people just on my personal page, but in all of our social media, we might have 5,000. That's viewers, that's not active uh, participants or members, or how do you take something like streaming and apply to what we're doing and be able to scale up in like a year, build up the viewer uh, uh, capacity and get consistent viewers and make that move faster. So that, that comes down to two things. Um, you definitely want to build a campaign. So this is, this is where it gets real tricky mm. um, from a media standpoint. You want to build a campaign. So you want to treat yourself like yourself. You want to treat yourself like a television network. If mm -hmm. you're a television network, how do you get information out to people? Well, you want to make sure it gets on every platform that people can see. Mm -hmm. And then you want to tell everybody in your group to retweet and re you know to retreat and share everything mm -hmm, you do mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right and you want to continue to do that the other thing you need to do um is work with the other people within your organization and network to other professionals that may or may not be directly tied to what you're doing mm -hmm. because then they know other people and the professionals will share amongst themselves and they'll share within their network so you'll actually get more people you guys will be cross-pollinating but then you'll get more people and that's how you kind of build your professional network so you want to go through things like linkedin live you want to go to other conferences and conference pages and find out what they're doing and find out where you fit in and basically see if you can actually make partnerships with them so you can share so you can basically mm -hmm. share clients or share viewers because mm -hmm. at that point you're going to build your viewer base so um, we are working we are working towards that and building uh, partnerships in MOUs and stuff like that. It's just, you know, I'm one person, right? And so it's being really right. strategic. And, you know, like I'm joining, a, I've joined a collective and there's about five or 10 of them. We're partnering on some other nonprofits on a grant, but it's like, I'm over here, I'm over there, I'm over here, I'm over there. And so it's, it's, a, it's, yeah, it's a strategic plan. So it's, it's, it's a lot. Right. And like I said, that's why you want to have a strategic plan as opposed to just kind of running around with chicken with head cut off because you'll miss stuff. But that's like, me. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, um, Michael, is, is Lisa going to be at the meeting on Wednesday? No, um, no this is um, <laughs> no, not 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 particularly this one because this is a separate project. OK. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I'll just have to find some time to actually get together with, I guess, you and kind of go over some things. I have some Great, ideas. yeah, let's have a separate meeting. That would be awesome. And my, it's a couple of my team members. That would be the bomb. Yeah, um, and then basically I can kind of point you in some directions. Like I said, I, I've been doing um, uh, media and media marketing. I worked in the video game industry for a very long time, so I got a chance to see a lot of stuff. 
And then I've also been a child actor. I worked in television for a little bit. Oh, wow. So I have like a lot of different, I have a lot of different skill sets that kind of float everywhere. And I just kind of started really kind of, kind of isolating on what I do well, as opposed to Focus. what I know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And know? that's what we like have there's to stuff do. That I know, and then, uh, but then I also have built a network of people that I know that are help with building brand and help with building their business practices and help with growing brands and that kind of stuff so mm-hmm, those are people mm-hmm. i definitely want to get you in link with mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because that would actually be helpful mm-hmm. going forward well yeah and you know again we're going global like i said we have a global entrepreneur session coming up and i know women all over the world that are building businesses and have businesses and and of course you know black and brown women are in vogue now right black folks are in vogue now too right so um not to be sarcastic, but we need to capitalize off of that and, and bring interesting content. Where While the door is open. Yes. Michael, yeah, no, because you brought Rob in. Because I'm going to tell you, Michael, I was so tired. I was like, oh, do I got to go to Michael's class today? <laughs> but oh my God, this is just like open. And, and this is kind of just the, the introductory point. Yeah. Like, um, there's so much more that I'm doing here from my setup, but um, I wanted to try to present the information in the most sim- simplistic way possible so that, um, okay, so that um, anyone who's embarking on this journey to start streaming from home and want to do it well, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, this is kind of how you want to do it well. Because I've, I've, done, I've done the streaming in the past from like, uh, excuse my language, from a half-assed position. Mm-hmm. Um, and it just doesn't work. Like if you really want to do it well from home, from like a home setup perspective, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, be willing to make the investment. Okay. So we're going to let, we're going to wrap up. I think um, uh, Rob still has his mic on. Does anybody have any other questions uh, to wrap to, to Kayla or anybody? Um. No, but I do hope we meet again because I'm about to go do some research off of things you threw out. <laughs> and then I'll be oh, better. <laughs> oh, so, okay, so uh, Rob and Mike, put your... I put my number in okay. there. Okay. So and I, then... put, I put both of my names so y'all could know. Um, I guess now I'm kind of interchanging between those that call me Cookie and those that call me Michael. So well, I call you Michael. Hi, <laughs> Michael. My Cookie and Michael. <laughs> And that's, and that's fine, you know, it's whatever. Um, but that's my number, it's in there. I'll put it in there. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, Kayla also, Rob, has, and she's an entertainer. And I just met her, she sang at my conference and she just heard about me, what we were doing from another mutual friend. And she just jumped on board, right? She just jumped in. So now she's part uh- of the Odos family and the Odos network. And um, she has a lot of resources. She's a musician and entertainer and she has a really huge network. So we could really gel and pull some really cool um, stuff yeah, cool together people together in the future, find some funding and, you know, really bring this together. But more importantly to your point, Mike, is mm. entrepreneurs need to put together quality services, streaming services, and content. I would, right. like, I would like Odos to be at the center of that education, especially for female, black and brown female entrepreneurs. Okay, so I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there and reinforcing that. So. Well, you know, well, well, just like I said, you know, before, and, you know, I was, I was introduced to you through Andrew. So, right, right, right. You know, a- as you know, Andrew does this with creativity. This is what he does. So he's, you know, he's at the point where he's, he's building the team of people that do the streaming as well, along with him. And we're kind of just waiting for people that are ready to move forward. We have the equipment, you know, we're here to kind of help people manifest their vision. Like my, my vision in gaming it's already happening somewhat in terms of mm-hmm. in terms of my esports mm-hmm. and competing mm-hmm. and my content and my anime and stuff I'm doing. That's kind of happening somewhat already. But um, if I can help other people bring their visions, 
I think in that, okay, that's perfect because then we can, when we create the next session, we give it a little bit. Hey, Rob, can you um, put your mic on? I don't know if you can hear us. Yeah, my mic's on. I mean, can you turn it off? I mean, block it for a second. I think you're you're the only one that's rattling. Um, if you're cooking dinner over there, Rob, we'll be right over, by the way. Um, <laughs> so, Mike, when we create another segment like this, then we really want to build it up and give it a little bit more of um right to draw entrepreneurs in to participate in this knowledge and information because this was just really good it was on point it was an hour you know and it, it just hit some really good nuggets for quality streaming and we can do a video and post on the Odo's um, uh, nonprofit page to talk this up a little bit too so this is this is really good any other questions you guys no, just thank you. Yeah, so Monique, are you good? Yep, I'm good. Angel missed it. Um, Trisha dropped off. Rob, you are a blessing. Um, blessings mm -hmm. to you. Mike, you are a blessing. You already know that. Um, thank but, you for having me. Yeah. Thank you for inviting me to do the class. Thank you. It's going to be phenomenal. And your, the name of your business is again? Tell uh, us. Go Goddesses Media. Goddess is media here in the Silicon Valley San Jose community. He's going to be coming back to present to Odo Synergy Services. We want to thank everybody. We're going to be posting this video on the Odo's uh, YouTube page in the Odo's uh, web 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 website. <laughs> I need uh, I need something, and so uh, we want to thank everybody for coming out again. It's warm here on. Monday afternoon. Next week, we're going to have insurance for entrepreneurs. What type of uh, insurance to purchase for your business as a startup or a entrepreneur? If you're doing comparison shopping, we're going to have uh, a, uh, a female uh, founder that has two state farm businesses here in Santa Clara County. So we encourage everybody to come out and check that out on next Monday. And then July the 25th, we're going to be hosting our very first global, global black female expat entrepreneur forum here Woo! on, on um, July the 25th at 9 a.m. We'll be covering women from four different um, continents or countries. And so this is our very first global forum. And we're really, really excited. We have some phenomenal founders and, and leaders, and we're going to be talking about how they're pivoting their businesses in the midst of the pandemic and in the midst of uh, their racial inequities in, in, going on in the United States. And a lot of them have family here. And so that's going to be a very lively conversation. I'm so excited. Lots of work, lots of detail, but I think it's going to be the bomb. Anyway, this is Lisa Riley, founder of Odo Synergy Services, Women of Color Global Entrepreneur Network. We want to thank everybody for being here today, and we will talk to you soon. Stay blessed and stay safe and wear your mask, people. Peace out. Peace out. All right. Peace out. Peace out. Peace out. Turn it off.